Muchas gracias. Uh... Thank you. First, I'd like to give thanks to the organizers, and I'd like to congratulate you for this event. <clears throat> now, we've heard from the authorities, uh, leaders in the area, and it's a great responsibility, but I hope that I'll be able to be up to the task. Now, packaging is a key part of our life, and packaging has it's been something that we've seen from the cradle upwards. Mm. And so uh, packaging is always there from when we were very young to the very last days of our life. Therefore, mm, it's important that if we think about waste and we only associate waste with packaging, then perhaps we're on the right path. This is because packaging uh, fulfills many different functions. I think we can break this down to four different areas. First, a product is consumed where and when it's produced. And this uh, actually occurs very rarely. And we need to control and monitor the amount of product that is supplied to the producer. And we also need to be able to aware of legislation with regards to the product that is being produced at any given moment. So um, I think that we can classify these various different requirements in four different areas. First of all, technical requirements, uh, conservation needs, um, gas barriers, uh, temperature restrictions, uh, uh, exposure to light. So we need to be able to ensure various different conservation uh, requirements so that whatever the consumer uses or consumes can be supplied to them in optimum conditions. But then we have general uh, considerations. We have directives, laws, legislation related to consumer protection. An example uh, is all the regulations with regards to um, food handling, traceability of various different food products throughout the packaging process. And we also have legislation on uh, waste management for, for packaging, which we will hear about more. The third area is the consumer requirements. Mm, the packaging must conserve and protect the product, but it also needs to guarantee sale to the consumer. It's, mm, we need to make the product more attractive to the consumer. So the packaging, therefore, needs to comply with certain features that m meet the demands of the consumer, both the size of the packaging and the shelf life of the product itself. And then finally, the fourth area are the logistics requirements, uh, warehousing and distribution of goods. Mm. And logistics is becoming more complicated complicated every day. We use many different f modalities of transport. Uh, we are automating treatment in our logistics centers. And this means that we need to meet certain characteristics uh, for resistance. And this means that the properties of the packaging has to have certain characteristics. And mm, we also have an identification trend. This is the fourth, the fifth area of requirements in terms of identification. These are sustainability requirements with regards to identification and we first therefore need to introduce eco design into the fabrication, production, uh, consumption and marketing of products. So eco design is basically making decisions on what we do when we package a product during the entire life cycle. And I think we need to highlight the fact that there are various different stages during the life cycle of a product. Mm, and the packaging itself is only a part of this life cycle. First of all, we have the fabrication and the packaging. But apart from this, we have the management of the waste that is produced 
subsequently, and all of these different stages are part of the life cycle of the product itself. So we therefore need to have a holistic approach to these strategies, and the industry needs to be able to focus its approach on this life cycle evaluation so that it can minimize waste production. So um, what is Equimbus's approach to eco-design? Well, Equimbus is a uh, company that recycles and recovers waste to protect the environment. And um, what we do is we support uh, packaging companies so that they can introduce second design. We have developed certain services and tools. First, the company uh, becomes aware and then they introduce eco design into their production processes. Um, now, I obviously have uh, limited time, so I'm going to look at one of the initiatives. This is Design to Recycle. Design to Recycle is an initiative that we set up about five years ago. And our aim with this program is to um, accumulate 18 years of knowledge in uh, sorting and waste management in Spain. And with this 18 years of expertise, we want to look, approach decision makers in waste management in companies and let them become aware of the responsibility that they have when they introduce packaging products to the market. And there are four main areas in this strategy. First of all, identification and sorting for citizens so that they can understand we need to look at elements that make it difficult to manage waste and we need to make uh, waste easy to sort, we need to help them to identify which bin uh, you need to sort and deposit your waste into, we also need to uh, help with the sorting and transport, we need to reduce space requirements, we need to make packaging uh, smaller so we can actually put it into the openings of the bins themselves. We also need to help with the sorting plants. Today, the selection uh, sorting process is more and more automatic. There's much less manual operation at present. And the machinery has certain uh, features that make it difficult for them to sort. So we need to therefore establish standards for packaging so that we can minimize problems and in this way we will facilitate recycling in the long run and finally the recycling plants. Mm, once we have the various different materials recycled by type, we come to the stage of the process uh, in which we now recycle all these packaging materials and create new materials that we can then put to use. Now, the more uniform and better quality the material, the greater the possibility of being able to reuse materials in industry and therefore we are participating in this circular economy approach. Um, I have a few examples of businesses that are now introducing eco-design in the manufacturing of their packaging. We have a clear example here. What they did was they replaced an adhesive ticket with a, a flap of card. Uh, and the label was therefore replaced with this new packaging. This Therefore, if we can take off the flap, we can therefore separate the two different materials from the box and the flap that contains the box. So this makes it easier for them to recycle. Another example in making classification easier is the reduction of the visible size of the sleeve on a bottle. This uh, uh, It is often in the automatic uh, identification process to identify materials because of the size of the label. Therefore, by reducing the size of the label, the automatic process can actually uh, identify the type of material better in the recycling plant at the end of the process. Um, also, we need to make the packaging product less complex. Mm, for example, we might have something which is only a few micro centimeters thick, which might have a whole complex of different materials contained therein. So, uh, 
we need to simplify and uh, no matter how thick or thin the layer of material is, if we can have it composed of only one single substance, then we're going to simplify and make the recycling process more uh, uniform. Here we have another typical packaging process here in the islands. This is a carton and what we did is we replaced high density polyethylene with a natural high-density polyethylene and we also have a very natural neutral uh, uh, color which allows us to better identify and allows us to reuse and regenerate from the material. This therefore allows us to reintroduce the material at the end of the process into industrial processes. So in EcoMBES we support partner companies in the design and marketing process of sustainable materials that are easier to recycle. Mm, this product, but also in many different uh, products and areas. And we work in four main areas. First of all, awareness raising of the need to be aware of the process. We have simple guidelines. Mm, we give guidelines that are easy to apply, easy to use, so that professionals involved can understand that it's easy to work in this area. The next stage is initiation, to begin to widen knowledge. We provide training at this stage of the process, we organize workshops and face-to-face -face courses, and in this process, we uh, perhaps expand on the first awareness raising process. And the next process is making the, system, making the whole thing more systematic. Now we have raised awareness, we've trained the stakeholders, and they now know what the terminology is so they can better work with packaging. And what we're going to now do is set up tools to make the whole process more systematic. We have a, a web platform where our partners can go and they can introduce the f characteristics of their packaging product and they can therefore see in greater detail exactly how that product is going to be recycled. And finally, outreach. Mm, mm, our partners are spending time on making their products more sustainable, therefore what they need to do is tell people about it. We also award prizes, we release publications in which we mm, tell people about all the work that we do. So mm, I hope that I've been able to keep to the time limits, but I'm going to finish with a quote, not my quote, someone who is much wiser than me. Ruben Rousing, the founder of Tetra Pak, the cartons, he said that good packaging must save more than it costs. Now, I personally think that we're not only talking economical terms, but environmental terms. This packaging must save more in environmental impact than it would produce when it's being manufactured in the first place. So that's all from me, and thank you very much. Thank you.